As motorsport enthusiasts, we eagerly anticipate the thrilling era of the 2024 FIA WEC season. The 2023 season has been spectacular, thanks to the substantial growth of entries in the relatively new series hypercar category. 2023 marked the beginning of the new golden era of endurance racing opening doors for LMH and LMDH cars to compete head-to-head -head for overall victory. As we approach 2024, knowing the season track calendar, grid entries, new manufacturers, teams, and significant field changes is crucial. The way things are going will be different and more incredibly exciting than before. Firstly, let's talk about grid expansion and the changes. The full season entry for the 2024 World Endurance Championship could expand to as many as 40 cars. For the 2023 season, there were 36 to 38 cars across three classes on the grid, Hypercar, LMP2, and GTE AM. When it comes to multi-class endurance racing, there is not only one race going on, there are multiple. The growth of WEC's hypercar class has resulted in the loss of the secondary prototype class, which is the essential part of what the organization called its endurance pyramid that plays a role in the European and Asian Le Mans series and the IMSA Sports Car Championship. The LMP2 category will no longer be on the WEC grid in 2024 and will only compete in one race throughout the season, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. That is because next year's season will feature a significant increase in entries in the hypercar class to over 20 cars, with the arrival of BMW, Alpine, Lamborghini, and potentially Isota Fraschini. Unfortunately and sadly, Glickenhaus confirmed they will not return to the WEC grid in 2024. The FIA planned to make grid space for multiple manufacturers in the new LMGT3 category that replaces GTE AM for next season to compete for the first time in FIA WEC. WEC's LMGT3 class serves the low cost budget for the GT3 production based cars that also race in the IMSA Sports Car Championship. We expect to see top automobile brands like Ferrari, Porsche, Aston Martin, BMW, Mercedes, Lamborghini, Lexus, Chevy Corvette, and even the new Ford Mustang GT3 going head-to-head -head next year. Overall, next year's WEC entry list seems to be very packed. The ACO confirms that manufacturers currently involved in the hypercar class will be given priority. Manufacturers will be assigned two grid slots each. The FIA and ACO jointly administer the WEC series, with a minimum amount of 16 grid slots arranged in LMGT3 for 8 manufacturers, each running 2 cars. The 2024 championship total listed between 36 to 38 entries due to exceeding garage number limits at certain tracks. Autosport reported that while 2024 could see 40 cars on the grid, fewer opportunities for private teams will be available. As it stands, there will be two car factory teams from Toyota, Peugeot, Ferrari, and Porsche. Plus, there will be two new Alpine A424s and two BMW M Hybrid V8s. One entry each from Chip Ganassi Racing Cadillac, Isota Fraschini, Iron Lynx's Lamborghini SC63 and a customer Porsche 963 Jota and Proton will also compete. That is 17 hypercars and it's unclear if VanWall will return in 2024 at the moment. However, the hypercar class could exceed 20 cars. That's roughly 9 to 10 manufacturers and the hypercar class. The FIA announced the 2024 season calendar in June 2023, featuring eight races visiting eight countries across four continents, including two new and two returning tracks. Unfortunately, Sebring, Portimao, and Monza will not return for the 2024 season. Monza will not happen due to the track's redevelopment. Sebring's 1,000 mile race gained worldwide fame as the opening event of the World Endurance Championship in 2019, 2022, and 2023. The six hours of Porta Mile race debuted in WEC in 2021 and then returned in 2023. To some, it may be disappointing that Sebring, Porta Mile, and Monza will not return to WEC in 2024, but we can hope they will in 2025 or later. 
The WEC prologue and the season opener will be held for the first time in Doha, Qatar in early March 2024 at Lucille International Circuit. This event will take place on a brand new track in WEC. The name of the race will be the Qatar 1812 Kilometer, named after the country's national day, and will last 10 hours, serving as a pillar of celebration each year. Lucille Circuit is a 3.3 mile long track featuring 16 corners and a 1 km straight start finish line. It is a fast and flowing track where mid to high speed corners and a main straight predominate, which delivers plenty of overtaken opportunities. MotoGP and Formula 1 have had fantastic races here. Without a doubt, it will be fascinating to witness the endurance racing spirit present there. Round 2 introduces another new racetrack as Amola replaces Monza as the Italian round of the WEC in April 2024. The 6 hours of Amola race will happen for the first time in WEC history. It is a 3 mile long track featuring 19 turns located in northern Italy. Imola is notorious for its association with the dangers of Formula 1. The racetrack draws inspiration from Nürburgring and Circa de Spa. The track features technical chicanes, long straight, narrow sectors with low to mid speeds and elevation changes that make it tough to overtake under braking. It will be fascinating to see how the racing will go at Imola for WEC. Round 3 is a 6 hour race at Circuit de Spa in Belgium's forest town of Spa hosted in May 2024. The 6 hours of Spa is the event that gives the best rehearsal to the following 24 hours of Le Mans. Spa is one of the oldest circuits in the world and is well known for endurance racing and Formula 1. Circuit de Spa is a fantastic track and mercilessly unforgiving with Rydillon and Orge being some of the most dangerous turns of any racetrack in existence. Spa is a 4.3 mile long technical circuit with 20 turns designed for high speed racing and overtaking. Round 4 is a 24 hour race at Circuit de la Sarthe, known as the 24 hours of Le Mans in France's city of Le Mans. The event will take place on June 15th and 16th, 2024. The 24 Hours of Le Mans is a brutal test of endurance where competitors raced multiple classes of fast cars for 24 hours flat out of the incredibly long 8.5 mile circuit with 38 turns. WEC's Le Mans race features the largest car grid than any other race in the series. The 92nd edition of the 24 hour French race will see well over 60 cars across 3 classes on the grid. The hypercar class will see approximately 20 cars at Le Mans, making the 2024 race even more thrilling. Le Mans has been the most enduring racing competition in the world since 1923. It's an exciting endurance event that has kept motorsport enthusiasts glued to their screens or cheering on the sidelines for a century. Round 5 brings back the 6 hours of Sao Paulo to the Interlago circuit in Brazil, South America. WEC returns to Brazil in mid-July 2024 for the first time since 2014. After a decade, it is exciting to witness the return of this track to WEC. Interlagos is a 2.6 mile track with 15 turns. One of the main characteristics of Interlagos is that the hilly sloping turns make it challenging for cars and drivers to master. Interlagos is well known for hosting various motorsport events, including Formula 1, Brazilian stock car racing, and sports car endurance racing. Round 6 of WEC returns to host 6 hours of Circuit of the Americas for Lone Star Le Mans in the United States, last seen in 2020. After a 4 year absence, I am stoked and surprised that this track finally returns to WEC at the start of September 2024. The abbreviation used for the Circuit of the Americas is COTA. Kota is known for its technical nature, with a length of 3.4 miles and 20 turns. The circuit was the first in the United States to be purpose-built for Formula 1, but also home to various motorsport events. The track layout includes two long straightaways, left, right, 
left S turns, elevation changes, and challenging sharp corners that are tough to master and overtake. There is a debate on how well multi-class racing will go at the Circuit of the Americas, despite its suitability for open wheel racing. Round 7 of WEC travels to Fuji Speedway to stage the penultimate round with its famous 6 hour race in Japan in mid-September 2024. Fuji Speedway is a high speed track with a high speed 1 mile front straight and low mid speed turns, a tight slow chicane generating plenty of opportunities for overtaking action. Fuji Speedway is notorious for the contemporary era of the Super GT Championship with a length of 2.8 miles with 16 turns. At the start of November 2024, Round 8 of WEC will return to the Middle East region to host the season finale at the Bahrain International Circuit, where the 2024 World Champions will stand for victory. The race will last for 8 hours. Bahrain Circuit is a 3.3 mile track with 15 turns, featuring tight and blind corners, high speed left right left as turns, mid speed corners and many straights offering chances of overtaking. And with that, we finished the details about everything you need to know for the 2024 WEC season. Before we wrap up this video, it's time for a quick conclusion. The 2024 season promises to be greater than ever before. The 2024 World Endurance Championship is another positive development in the series, featuring a record number of entries in the hypercar class, an eight race calendar, and races held in diverse locations. This mix of old and new circuits, including new markets, offering something for everyone, from fans to manufacturers of endurance racing programs. The world-class racing circuits and venues on the schedule provide a fantastic opportunity for motorsport fans to witness some of the best racing in the world. The manufacturer's commitment to the hypercar and LMGT3 class is a testament to the bright future of the World Endurance Championship. Prepare to witness some of the best racing in the world at world-class racing circuits and venues. I am very, very excited as much as you are. And so that's the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed and learned something watching this video. If you did, do not forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for some more motorsport videos. As always, feel free to give me any suggestions and I'll check them out in the comments as soon as possible. Until next time, peace out, stay safe, Chris the Radar, out.